Welcome to the podcast on Paromas. My name is Michael Marchetti. Clinically, we know Paromas to be uncommon, benign sweat gland tumors, most frequently seen on the volar surfaces of the extremities. They appear as nonspecific pink nodules or plaques that can mimic virtually any benign or malignant neoplasm. Earlier this year, we published our findings on the dermoscopic features and patterns of paromas. We identified four dermoscopic features that were specifically associated with paroma. They included branched vessels with rounded endings, white interlacing areas around vessels, yellow structureless areas, and milky red globules. Branched vessels with rounded endings uh, was a, a vessel morphology first described in 2009 and has been reported to uh, mimic uh, flower-like vessels, leaf-like vessels, cherry blossom vessels, or chalice-like vessels. These are all uh, different descriptions of the same morphology of a linear vessel with multiple ramifications or branches that are circular or rounded in their appearance. In our study, this vessel morphology was present in 30% of paromas versus 6 to 7% of controls. I've highlighted them here with small black arrows. Some further examples of the branch vessels with uh, rounded endings. White interlacing areas around vessels. This was the whitish stroma between the vessels in highly vascularized tumors present in 23% of paromas versus 2% of controls. Yellow structureless areas tended to be focal within the lesion, 32% of paromas versus 10% of controls. Finally, milky red globules, these tended to be subtle, 20% of paromas versus 5% of controls. We know this is not a feature that is entirely specific to this diagnosis, can be seen in other malignant tumors such as melanoma, um, but because of the uh, appearance of paromas um, and sometimes the difficulty in visualizing the vessels, I think that most likely this represents vessels that are not uh, imaged uh, very well and appear as milky red globules. The diagnostic accuracy of the presence of any one of these features um, was 62.8% sensitivity, 82% specificity. We did significantly better with non-pigmented paromas. Pigmented paromas, 23% um, of the time, had one or more of these features. We also saw features that uh, were prevalent but were not specifically associated with the diagnosis of paroma, such as colorette, keratin, blood spots, erosions, and ulcers, commonly seen in these tumors. We further characterized paromas into patterns. The most common pattern was, um, or I should say, uh, the first pattern was seen in about 24% of tumors. Uh, this is the classic textbook des description of paroma most frequently on the volar surfaces of the hands or the feet. Um, about 50% had a collarette. Very frequently they appeared traumatized with blood spots and also had yellow structureless areas, milky red globules and areas, and infrequently branched vessels with rounded endings. Classic pink nodule, milky red globules, blood spots, and a collarette. Another example of this presentation. The second pattern occurred in about 18% of paromas. Uh, it was on the trunk or non-acral extremity. They often were polymorphous um, with high, highly vascularized white interlacing areas around vessels was prominent as were branch vessels with rounded endings. The third pattern occurred about 26% of the time. These were small lesions, uh, much smaller than the other patterns. They had no anatomical predilection. Often they had no vessels. Uh, when present, sometimes branch vessels with rounded endings about a third of the time. Clinically, they seem to most simulate basal cell carcinoma, sometimes even skin tag, uh, but arborizing vessels were rare, as we show in these examples. Very subtle, small papules, not what you would characteristically uh, envision a paroma would look like. The fourth pattern was a minor pattern, 10% of lesions. It could be found anywhere. They were often quite large, several centimeters in diameter. They most uh, resembled a keratinizing or pseudoepitheliomatous tumor with keratin and scale and atypical hairpin vessels. Uh, clinically and dermoscopically, they most resembled an inflamed seborrheic keratosis. About 23% of the lesions were feature poor 
and did not conform to a pattern. Um, they often had no vessels and very infrequently had proma-specific features. Uh, these are lesions for which a biopsy would always be needed for a diagnosis. Promas were uh, uh, mimicked, uh, promas mimicked other neoplasms uh, frequently, such as xanthal granuloma, dermatofibroma, basal cell carcinoma, pigmented basal cell carcinoma, and squamous cell carcinoma. We also saw lesions mimicking paroma. Most frequently, these were highly inflamed tumors, such as an inflamed seborrheic keratosis and an inflamed nevus, in which the vessels began to resemble uh, branched vessels with rounded endings. Paroma truly was the great mimicker. Um, we found examples where we could not distinguish paroma from seborrheic keratosis, angioma, nevus, and amelanotic melanoma metastasis. So these are tumors for which you always need to obtain a biopsy, and indeed the point of our study was not to identify paromas that uh, did not need a biopsy. Uh, we did not include pleural carcinoma, for example, in our study, um, and so we want to emphasize that these tumors should always be biopsied to confirm a diagnosis and rule out malignancy. With that, I thank you for your attention, and I hope you learned something interesting and useful about the diagnosis of Paroma today.